It's Halloween time, folks, and as a die-hard horror movie fan, I've decided there's no better time than to make a video counting down the top 10 horror movie villains ever. Without further ado, let's get to the list. Number 10, Jason Voorhees. Some people might take exception to Jason being ranked this low on the list, but this is my list and I'll do whatever the hell I want with it. I've always found Jason to be a little bit overrated and there's really nothing special about him in terms of quality. He's just a big hulking monster that goes around killing people in brutal ways. It doesn't help that the creators of Friday the 13th have admitted that the series and Jason are just a ripoff of Michael Myers, a far more interesting and superior serial killer, but we'll get to him later. I'd be lying if I said Jason didn't have any cool moments throughout his 12 films in the Friday the 13th saga. Yes, you heard that right, 12 films. And although Jason was only the primary killer for 10 of them, that's still a hell of a lot. In fact, no horror movie villain has more confirmed kills on camera than Jason with 100 157. That's like an hour's worth for Planned Parenthood. Jason's most redeeming quality, and why I still have him on this list despite finding him to be overrated, is that he is a staunch opponent of premarital sex. Going out of his way countless times throughout the series to show people, especially young teenagers, that if you have premarital sex, you will die. And I think that's a message that we can all get behind. Jason's worst quality, despite the fact that he's a mass murderer, is that his head is shaped the same way as Richard Jefferson. Talk about a tough scene. At number 9, it's the shark from Jaws. When Jaws first hit the scene in 1975, it had people everywhere shitting their diapers. Like any great horror film, Jaws was effective partly because of the music. Anytime the music came on the screen, you knew some really bad shit was about to happen. There's no real clever premise about the movie, it's just a killer shark sees humans and he eats them. One of the things the movie was very effective at was making people afraid of any sort of body of water, and since the earth is 70% and water, there's a lot of those. The shark's best quality is that he's definitely not racist considering the amount of white people that he eats and kills throughout the movies. In fact, you could argue that the white people trying to escape from being killed by the shark is a form of racism. When it comes to the worst qualities of the shark, there's a few. One of them is, is if you don't want to be eaten and killed by the shark, then don't go in the fucking water. I mean, this isn't complicated. Even as a 10 year old, when I first saw this movie, all I said was, why not just not go in the water. I mean, problem solved, right? But this one-dimensionalness kind of goes into the bigger worst quality of the shark, which is that he's a pretty easily replaceable villain. One might even say he's the Tom Brady of movie serial killers. I mean, the sharks in Jaws 2, 3, and 4 were able to do the same thing he was. He has a very easily replaceable skill set. But still, at the end of the day, Shark Brady deserves his respect for the amount of terror he inflicted on America in the mid-1970s, second only to marijuana. Number 8. Jigsaw because I'm a fucking idiot, I thought that the killer in the Saw movies was actually the little puppet that you see riding on his tricycle. It wasn't until I actually first started watching the Saw movies about a decade after they first came out that I realized Jigsaw wasn't the puppet. He was just some average looking white dude who used the puppet as a tool to send a message to his victims. What separates Jigsaw from a lot of other prolific movie serial killers is that he doesn't do a lot of the killing himself. In fact, for the vast majority of the time that he's on screen in the series, he's a frail, terminally ill old man who has several apprentices to help him do his deeds. It's easy to forget now, but back in 2004 when the first Saw movie came out, it was a legitimate, terrifying film with an extremely effective twist at the very end. But nowadays in 2020, the Saw franchise has basically been reduced to torture porn. The series is now up to eight films with a ninth currently set to come out in 2021. To me, the Saw movies are like McDonald's or Burger King. What they offer is a bunch of empty calories, but at the end of the day, it doesn't hurt every now and then to binge on it. To me, Jigsaw's best quality is that he captures victims of all races, showing that he's not racist. I think we can all agree that being a serial killer is bad, but being racist is worse. Jigsaw's worst quality is that he decided to be a fucking serial killer instead of, I don't know, maybe a doctor or something? Like, the fact that this guy is able to build so many traps in plain sight and not get caught means that maybe he could have helped out the military and captured 
capturing terrorists? I don't know. At least his super hot ex-wife had a nice rack. Number 7. Freddy Krueger Freddy Krueger is arguably the most known movie serial killer of all time, alongside Jason and Michael Myers. Unlike Jason and Michael, however, Freddy doesn't just talk, he talks shit. And I mean a lot of shit. Unlike Jason, who is a blatant ripoff of Michael Myers, Freddy is unique, which is why I have him higher than Jason on this list. Freddy's MO of being a demon that can kill you in your sleep is extremely effective because everybody sleeps, there's no avoiding it. Unlike the shark in Jaws, if you don't want to get eaten by a shark, just don't go in the water. If you don't want to get killed by Jason, then don't go to Camp Crystal Lake. If you don't want to be killed by Hillary Clinton, then don't dig up some dirt on her. But Freddy's uniqueness in being a serial killer who talks shit and interacts with his victims came with a price. In my opinion, Freddy had the potential to be a much more terrifying character than he ended up being. In the first two films of the series, Freddy was a demonic killer with no humor. He still talked, unlike Michael and Jason, but it wasn't to the point where it got campy or overdone. As the series progressed, Freddy became less and less of a horror character and more like a comedian. Freddy had a great look for a horror villain and he had a great premise, but the directors seemed more interested in making him a clown than a villain which is unfortunate. Freddy's best quality is that he's killed multiple people who did marijuana. Even though he doesn't explicitly state it, to me this shows that he is anti-marijuana, which means that he's okay in my book. Because no matter how hard Freddy tries, he'll never be able to kill as many people as marijuana has. Freddy's worst quality is that he was the byproduct of premarital sex. Now, I'm not saying that having premarital sex will turn your child into Freddy Krueger, but I'm not not saying it either. Number 6. Norman Bates When the original Psycho movie came out in 1960, it was considered the scariest movie of all time, and for good reason. All these years later, it still holds up well. And a big reason why it continues to hold up well to this day is because of the main antagonist, Norman Bates. Norman Bates looks like your typical white guy, but he has a seriously fucked up mind. He's also got some serious mommy issues. The shower scene from the original Psycho is still one of the most famous scenes in cinema history. But it takes more than just one scene to get a character to rank this highly on the best of all time list. In my opinion, which is an unpopular one, Psycho 2, which came out in the early 80s, is actually better than the original. It takes place 20 years or so after the original, and it shows an older Norman trying to cope with his inner struggles about his mother. A few more sequels and a TV show called Bates Motel followed to continue on the Norman Bates lineage. But the biggest reason why Norman Bates is so effective as a character is because he could be transported into any time or place and still be believable. Especially in 2020, I mean, just look at the presidential election. Both are white men responsible for the suffering of many people, just like Norman. Norman's best quality is that he's absolutely not ashamed to dress up like a woman. This shows that he is pro-LGBTQ and absolutely not homophobic whatsoever. Norman's worst quality is that he's a bit of a misogynist. A disproportionate amount of his victims are women. And because of this, if Norman was running for public office, I wouldn't vote for him because he's a misogynist, not because he's a murderer. I mean, murderers get elected to public office all the time. But all joking aside, props to Norman Bates for overcoming his demons to become the starting quarterback for the New York Giants. Number 5. Ghostface Ghostface isn't one person. In fact, in the Scream movies, there are either multiple killers or different people hiding behind the mask each time. Ghostface ranks this high because of how Scream helped breathe new life into the horror genre in the mid-90s. With its self-awareness and meta-humor, Scream made horror cool again. But no horror movie is effective without a great villain. Ghostface's effectiveness was on full display from the opening scene in the original. Using his trademark voice distorter and armed with swaths of horror movie knowledge, he slowly tormented poor Drew Barrymore before filleting both her and her boyfriend. Ghostface taunts his victims in the same vein as Freddy Krueger, which shouldn't be a surprise considering both are the brainchild of the late great horror icon Wes Craven. For as effective as Ghostface is, the character does have some flaws. While the original Scream benefited greatly from the unprecedented twist of multiple characters being behind the mask, the trope lost its luster fast in the following three sequels. The idea that any random person could be Ghostface made the character feel less threatening and more vulnerable. I mean, they literally made an entire spoof movie making fun of the character. Ghostface's best quality is his commitment to one woman, Sidney Prescott. Throughout the entire series, the killer never once loses his focus on the damsel in distress. This country would be a lot better off if more people were as committed to one person as good old Mr. Face here was to Sydney. Ghostface's worst quality is how he repeatedly falls over all the fucking time. I'm not joking, just look at this shit.
four, Leatherface. Truth be told, I'm not a huge fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. Most of the films are nothing more than campy gore fest with little substance. However, the original remains one of the best horror films of all time, and the hulking Leatherface is a big reason why. What sets the original apart from most horror films is the atmosphere. From start to finish, the viewer feels as though they're right in the hot Texas summer with the characters, who are slowly picked off one by one by Leatherface and his demented family members. Leatherface, who is based off of real-life serial killer Ed Gein, is kind of like Shaq. His effectiveness lies in his brute strength and size. There is nothing graceful or humorous about him like there is with Hannibal Lecter or Freddy Krueger. Yet the reason why he's this high on my list is, well, to put it simply, if a 6 foot 4, 350 pound man charges at you with a chainsaw while wearing a person's bloody face as a mask, you will shit your pants. There are very few movie villains with that kind of effectiveness. Leatherface's best quality is how often he wears a mask to help stop the spread of COVID. He was doing it long before it was cool or political. And sure, his mask might be the faces of people he murdered, but still, you can tell deep down he's a sweetie pie. Leatherface's worst quality is his inability to vote in presidential elections. This means he hasn't been listening to all of the brave, super-rich NBA and NFL players who were on TV all the time telling people to vote. Pretty selfish in my opinion. Number 3. Hannibal Lecter If Leatherface is Shaq, then Hannibal Lecter is Akeem Olajuwon, with his elegant speeches and well-thought-out movements. We know that he's a murderous cannibal, yet we can't help but be drawn to him. He truly is an enigma wrapped in a mystery. How can a man who prides himself on being so sophisticated and high class also have the impulse to commit such brutal and violent crimes. Unlike most other movie serial killers whose effectiveness declines the more they're on screen, Hannibal's allure never dims. Every single movie he appears in, from Silence of the Lambs to Red Dragon to Hannibal, leaves the viewer wanting more. We want to listen to him ramble about clues to help catch another serial killer. We want to see him toy with FBI agents like Corey Starling. We never know when he'll explode into a carnal rage like he did to those two police officers in his prison cell. Hannibal successfully pulls off an almost impossible task, creating the aura of invincibility despite being a mere mortal. And for that, he gets this ranking. Hannibal's best quality is his cooking ability. Bitches love men who can cook, believe me. Although, fellas, please, do not take the phrase eating a girl out as literal as Hannibal would. Hannibal's worst quality was tough to figure out. But after some consideration, I finally settled on his accent in his now-canceled NBC show Hannibal. I literally couldn't understand half the shit Mads Mikkelsen, the actor who played him, was saying. It sounded like a fucking chipmunk with nuts in his mouth. Anthony Hopkins is the only Hannibal Lecter that I acknowledge. Number two. Pinhead. This guy has frickin' pins in his frickin' head and he shoots frickin' chains out of his frickin' hands. That right there is enough to justify this ranking. Pinhead is the leader of the Cenobites, a group of extra-dimensional beings who fuck up people badly. They are summoned through a puzzle box called the Lament Configuration. This is important as it explains how Pinhead came to be in the first place. Pinhead was once a normal human being named Elliot Spencer, who served as a captain for the British in World War I. However, after experiencing the horror of war up close, Spencer lost his faith in humanity. While traveling the world trying to fulfill his hedonistic urges, Spencer stumbled across the puzzle box while in India, and after accidentally opening it up, he became Pinhead. Pinhead, like most other horror movie villains, suffers from too many sequels, but the guy is just so fucking badass it doesn't matter. Unlike most other horror movie villains, however, Pinhead has a strange sense of honor, which is shown when he spares Kirsty Cotton's life in the original film. But don't get it twisted though, Pinhead is still a sadistic bastard. But he's our sadistic bastard, and that's what really matters. Pinhead's best quality is his voice. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Pinhead's worst quality is how he can only be summoned through a tiny little puzzle box. Personally, I would just destroy the puzzle box because I'm built different. And at number one, Michael Myers. Michael Myers is why I fell in love with horror. In terms of unsettling visuals, nothing will ever surpass his mask from the original Halloween. The fact that such a legendary part of movie lore was created from a shitty, modified William Shatner mask remains incredible to this day. Michael is capable of being brutal like the many imposters he inspired. <coughs> Jason. <laughs> 
but he is at his most effective and scariest when hiding in the shadows stalking his prey. Even now, over 40 years after he first appeared on screen, nobody is really sure what Michael is. Considering how much damage he's sustained and survived throughout the franchise, he's obviously not a normal human. However, outside of the shitty-ass Thorn Colt movies, there is no explanation for what gives him his supernatural strength. And in a way, that's what makes him so great. It's not like those bullshit, unrealistic ghost or possession movies like Paranormal Activity and The Blair Witch Project. The idea of a guy putting on a mask, getting in a blue jumpsuit, and killing people with a knife is totally plausible and believable. Michael Myers is horror, and you'll never be able to convince me otherwise. Michael's best quality is how he never says anything. He's a great listener, the type of guy you'd feel comfortable leaving around your daughter. Unless it's Halloween time, of course. Michael's worst quality is how he refuses to wear the same mask twice. I hope you enjoyed this video. With so many great horror movie villains around, I'm sure I left some of your favorites off.